a lot of people are making music, but some of them don't have their stamp. You know, yeah. they're doing some stuff that you can hear of somebody else doing, and you may find others uh, not just copying, but others just not going, not trying to find their own thing. Yes, you know, not trying, not 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 trying to create something new. You know, yeah, I do know. Not you. not being innovative because they lack the courage. <laughs> KillerKellerOfficial.com Street Culture TV Beatbox created KillerKeller And we need to talk about world music and street culture KillerKeller Podcast I'm a lucky guy You're a lucky guy <laughs> I'm a lucky guy as well Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast Live and direct, central London or central as you need to be Oh, you're in for a right treat. Big shout out to everybody, all the sharers and carers. People have got the television app free. Download for the sporting art and street culture. It's all there. It's all yours. It's all yours. Free, fine and dandy. Apple, uh, uh, everywhere. Go get it. Just It's there. You know what time it is. Get yourselves ready for the upcoming Hoddle Wars. It's time to graph punks up and get up with some NFT gaming. Also, big shout out to Chief Rocker Gear. From streets to stage, Chief Rocker is the streetwear of champions. If you don't know what time it is with this gentleman, then you've clearly been locked away in some isolated space for the past 30, 40 years. My goodness, this, this gentleman here is a gatekeeper of the culture over here. If it wasn't for him, I, I certainly wouldn't have met half the people that I have. He's, he's, he's performed and worked with everybody. Everybody, from Chaka Khan to Omar to, I mean, you name it, they all cite him as one of the original dons of the UK soul scene and beyond. Incognito, new album into you. This is Bluey. <laughs> with my friend, the man himself. How thank are you, you? Thank you for inviting me, man. Brother, it's an absolute pleasure. It's like next day. Do you know what I mean? Like, here he is. It just feels like the last time we were in a studio together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing about friendships like this and, yeah. and, and, the, and the love that we have for each other is that we go straight back to where we were last. Yeah, it's true. And I remember a small little... Studio, I say, I mean, it, it, it was most definitely, the energy in the place was insane. Big up Charlize, of course, each and every time. Uh, we were in the back of, I think it was Hibernism and Tube Station. You That's right. around the back. and Swan Yard. Yeah. Not only the, the, the front, the, the, the front of it had this amazing uh, uh, kebab shop that, even now, that's right. Thanks to you, you're yeah. like you're right. That's the best kebab you're ever gonna get. But then grabbed the kebab, went straight around the back of the studio, and it was almost like a, uh, a an Aladdin's cave. Yeah, exactly. That that place really gave me two things. It gave me an access to um, to to a studio that was affordable, but also across the road was. Um, various little TV and radio people. And so I, they helped me get connected. Because mm. Kiss wasn't too far of, of its time. Exactly. Right? Kiss was just around the corner. We were in a hub, you know, mm. uh, of like creativity. Mm. There were rehearsal studios on Holloway Road, two rehearsal studios. Absolutely. And uh, so if you were, like like me, if you were making music, you were always going to studios, rehearsing or recording and also involved with little radio stations and and making things come through, you know, early days. To get this gentleman on, goes without saying, he's busy and uh, his time is precious. New album, Into You. Um, and prior to that, Tomorrow's New Dream. Uh, I like Charlize on the front cover there. Uh, incredible catalogue and it's taking you around the world. Uh, uh, like... Monthly. <laughs> yeah, but I knew that's what I, I was going to be doing since I was five years old. I knew exactly what I was going to be doing and it never changed. The, the, from day to day I was working towards that. I came from a very small uh, island, the island of Mauritius, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I lived next to... Uh, 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 I, I lived in, in Port Louis where all the boats and, and were coming in and, and leaving. So I was watching boats come in and out and so... And various sailors would would I'd entertain them, play a little something with my little shoebox rhythm, wow. and uh, and and draw a little something that they could buy, give a little money to me, and so I learned to be a professional musician since I was five years old. And a hustler. And a hustler, yeah. And I've been hustling, and I'm still hustling, you know. 
So knowing what you're going to do for the rest of your life and 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 having a clear vision of that, school was just a distraction. Mm. My record collection was my uh, inspiration, my education, and uh, I love it. and that's it. Wow. Um, to have that kind of vision, because this is quite a running theme of the podcast, um, you have to develop a level of uh, tunnel vision, right? Blinkered. Totally blinkered. Like, but when you're from a background like Mauritius and like you say, uh, it, you know, you were working with incredible restriction and you, you just getting by mm -hmm. was hard enough. Yeah. Um, does that propel that tunnel vision? Yeah. You know, it's like if we give our children everything, they may miss what their uh, what their their real opportunities in life. They may miss them because they've just got everything, you know. But if they have to work for it, you know, I I came to England and I had to fight for everything. Mm -hmm. I had to fight for survival on the streets of London mm -hmm. because you know I came at a time where it was very difficult. It was like there's a lot of racism. Mm -hmm. Skinheads were about mm -hmm. and. I looked like a Pakistani, mm -hmm. so bang, there I was, you know, kind of mm -hmm. fighting my way through. But then I'd have, you know, somebody would pass me a guitar, I didn't have one at, at school, and, and I'd sing a song and, and I'd make friends. And like suddenly, a defence mechanism, almost yeah. like you're a hero. Immediately, immediately. Mm -hmm. And then, you you know, it, it, becomes, it becomes your shield, it becomes your weapon of choice, mm -hmm. you know, the music is just you know, it propels you that in, in the right direction. Mm. And with the, you also, through music, you also learn that a little act of love, when it, when it comes, counteracts all the hatred that you may feel. And, and, and that the, the stuff that should outweigh the love is actually at least equalized, mm. or if not su superseded by, mm. by love. And uh, that's what I found music gives me, and that's what I've been trying to give back ever since it's fed me. Mm. Now, by default, love love conquers absolutely everything, everything. when it comes to music. It's right? tattooed on my arm, and it's tattooed on my heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, big up Kenny Thomas, because uh, he... he 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 most definitely cited you with the podcast. Yeah, absolutely, his podcast. He very much uh, cited you. Um your entry into music was of a time. Now, I, I, I can only... I was, a, I was a mid child, you understand? But I do remember it very well being on the radio and, and hearing this this buzz, this new kind of... The Blues and Soul magazine-esque um, future Ford soul approach, perhaps off the back of Soul to Soul, but you were there before. 79. Yeah. Uh, and seven, 79 and and just before that I was in a band called Light of the World and uh, that was probably 78 77 78 <laughs> but seven, incognito has been going since 79 and so that's 44 years that's and um, bonkers isn't it it's, it's it is bonkers isn't it how do you take a 12 piece however many piece touring band and the, make albums the thing is it's worked for me rather yeah. than being a negative. It's been like how many to, how many people are willing to take a twelve piece band? We are. I you love know, that. How, how many people are are willing to uh, to do shows two three shows a day? Mm -hmm. We are. How many people are willing to fly in places where people don't want to go? Mm -hmm. You know, we were the first British band to to play like an electric concert in Kazakhstan. You know, and uh, we you know we we were like. <laughs> Wow. we were breaking ground you know with yeah. what what we did we there was a a, a, move, a movement that that they call smooth jazz in america we were the first british band to really get into that smooth jazz you know to me it existed with Roy Ayers and and and, All day. and, yeah. and and people like Grover Washington way before it became yeah. a, a thing you know 100%. a smooth jazz thing so the, my, my, Donald Bird. My, yeah, know, just, my, oh. my education came from yeah. that, you know, exactly. Some of those mellow tracks, yeah. you know. David but Axelrod now, and people like that, just... Dark. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, just whole other levels. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, when you embrace that, 
you have a vocabulary that allows you to travel because some people don't didn't recognize that it's needed and you're playing small audiences but it will grow mm. and if you were willing to invest your time in that because of the sheer love and your sheer desire to kind of broaden those people's horizons mm. with what you already know mm. and what you're going to create mm. we were lucky that we created our own sound if you don't create your own sound you, yeah, get, nowhere, yeah, you get nowhere all right yeah. you know that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, <laughs> true true right? say true yeah. say so it's one thing being uh you know doing something that already exists you know we play music we rap you know we we do we we, we do beats mm. but it's a thing if you you can't put your own stamp on it and that is the key mm. you know um, my 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 educators taught me that you know you want to listen to Morris White Open a Fire 1975 for the first time going to see Santana Santana fan and suddenly the opening act who I have no knowledge of, about anything about them step on stage and Morris White opens my eyes to something which is like wow this band has got a sound like Santana's got when Santana plays the guitar he plays a couple of notes you know it's Santana yeah. it's no one else real talk yeah 100% you know so I, I learned at that stage that you know you know, you listen to a couple of lines of Rufus Shaka Khan, you listen to her sing, and you know that's them. And mm -hmm. it's, it can be no one else. No. You know, you, you listen to an intro by a David Axelrod, and you know that's David Axelrod, and it's no one else. Yeah. You know, it's stamp. Yeah. So a lot of people are making music, but some of them don't have their stamp. You know, yeah. they're doing some stuff that you can hear somebody else doing. And you may find others uh, not just copying, but others just not going, not trying to find their own thing. Yes. You know? Not trying. Not 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 trying to create something new, you know? Yeah, I do know. Not, not being innovative because they lack the courage or mm. the vision, mm. you know? Just going back to my soul, soul analogy there, because obviously you were the precursor to, to, to all of this. You were bringing out, like I was saying, a, a score of people to create the sound that you were after um, and early doors as well. Yeah. There is a level of owning that identity in the music, backing yourself as a brand, putting down that money. So I get I get the motivation behind bringing out such a, a, a generous band, a, 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 a healthy um, amount of uh, people on board to bring out the best you can out of the sound. It costs money, but you it's better to do it that way off the bat so people know this is the identity of my my band. Yeah. As as opposed to having a band, because later on Soul to Soul would say they're like one of the British, they're not a band, they're a collective. We I set out to to form the first British Jazz Funk Collective. Yes. I didn't want a band because I'd been in a band and when some when you're in a band everybody is like says well, they, they'll even single you out as not being part of the band because you're not wearing the leather jacket or leather trousers that mm. everybody else is wearing mm. or the skinny tie or mm. whatever if you've got a certain kind of vision of your own of who you are. Can you imagine you like one, one, one member of like, um, I don't know, Daft, one, one of Daft Punk not wearing a hat or yeah, exactly. craft work not wearing their ties. You know exactly, what I mean? like <laughs> exactly. So I knew I, I couldn't, it couldn't be a band. A mm. band is a gang. And I didn't want to be in a gang. I wanted to be in a bit huge kind of like creative family yeah. that would include people and, and include people from other bands. Mm -hmm. You know, you're from this band, come and jam with us, you know. Oh, I love that. You That's know? one thing. It's a welcoming experience being yeah. around you, Bluey. Like generally, if there's a mic and this is going off, grab the mic, let's go. It's all, it's, it's you're so spontaneous. I'll yes, go, so, go so far as to say I got a beat from you this morning. <laughs> yeah, because when I woke up and I thought I'm going to be chatting with Keller so mm. it's like I'm going to be in your presence let me give you a little present <laughs> <laughs> you know so, so that you know if you I, I just felt maybe you'd vibe to this vibe and, it hard and, and and if you know and if you know the people that you you're approaching, mm -hmm. you, you you say rather than give you a regular rhythm, let me give you a little something mm -hmm. with a little kind of a different mm -hmm. lick that you you know. But I know I know your heart and I know your your openness to to sound mm -hmm. and 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 
uh, and how the depth mm. that you would go to 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 you know to in, in seeking to source sounds. Yeah. You know, a lot of people may say they may try to learn the technique you've got to 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 do something. You know, it's like a certain amount of breathing, certain amount of rhythmic rhythm rhythm making, and but it's also like the resources of where you've come from, where mm. your mind has been open to to switch things and put in something fresh. And mm. freshness comes from a large vocabulary. Give me, give, give, yes, yeah. I try telling these people all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, when a beatboxing, it's all about the experiences you hold. Yeah. And knowing what fits right in a song. Exactly. Dude. And it I, may be something, and it may be something you've never done before. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And too often we don't do things that we've never done before. Yeah. And, uh, to keep stuff fresh, that's what you have to do. You have to know your your vocabulary, mm. and yet be excited at expanding it. Yes, you know it's like we speak English, but we you know you go and listen to good poetry, you yeah. know, and 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 listen. Sometimes I, I I'm a stamp collector, and one of the things I like about going to collect, collecting stamps is going to stamp shop, and I'm st sitting there and there'll be a, this old guy next to me he's been in and we start talking and I find and I just got to sit there and listen to this guy because he's travelled he's done things if you just saw him and looked at him you think this is an old bloke mm. sitting down buying stamps but because he's collecting stamps he's collecting history he's collecting art life experiences life experiences and so therefore you speak to them and your mind is immediately op opened up you know yeah. and I, I, I love that about life. Yeah, and that's community as well. Like when you meet somebody, stamp collecting, for instance, or yeah. graffiti or whatever, you know. Yeah, it's it's exactly. not actually the act of it, it's the, the, all the things behind it's all, it. It's everything. It is, isn't it? It's, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw a, a name out and, you know, everyone duck, Quincy Jones, mm. um, because he he's amassed over the years enough of an understanding He's he's done so much that he's almost like unlocked every single code possible yeah. with the music. So you know you spend thirty seconds with him, and yeah. it's like, oh, yeah, I don't think I need to go back to the yeah. drawing board. You know, he's, he's he's a mentor because he has this knowledge and this ability, mm. but he also knows when to just bring in somebody yeah. and let them do it. Yeah, you know. But I it, see that in you, I see that in you, and a lot of people that are watching, yeah. they see that. That same attitude and energy in you. Oh, thank you very you know much. I mean? brother, you've yeah, unlocked yeah. so much. You've you've supported and brought so many artists in over the years. Jammed right the way through to you know A and Ring them essentially. You know you've done a lot of work and big artists as well. Well, when people see see me uh, succeeding and working, for instance, you know my band being used by Shaka Khan. Uh, going to the studio to produce George Benson, doing a track with Al Jarreau, you know, Paul Weller coming in the studio and doing a cut with me. You know, it's it's not because I'm just looking to collect people with names, but it's because I mean this is my this is coming from my education and what I've opened myself to. And they'll see it in you, mm. you know, mm. and therefore doors will open. And then you can open up doors for people. I remember going on tour uh rehearsing at John Henry's uh, uh, in, in near Caledonian Road and um th that same day, same the day before we went off Sade was next door and she <laughs> and she actually was struggling to find a singer to join her tour you know to back her and uh, she and I sacrificed the fact that that's my friend. He sings in my band, but I know he's going to work with Sade. I know it's going to change his life. Mm. Where incognito is is something that he can uh, he, he can move forward with. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. here he can rather than take two steps, he's going to take ten steps and bring that back yeah. to the family and bring that back to the family that love, mm. you know. And it's and me knowing Sade as a friend opened up a door for somebody else, you mm. know. So you have to be. You have to be understand that from a young age that you are here to to fulfill your dreams, but you are here to serve. Mm. The day that you forget that you're here to serve, you become this person who it feels a, who could possibly be aloof. Yeah. 
Mm. You, you become that person that may, because of seeing yourself so much, you don't see anything, anything else. Yeah. You know, you get, you get blinded by it, you know. The tunnel vision thing that we speak is important, but you must also have the, the awareness, which makes a Quincy Jones, which makes uh, Visionaries. a visionary, yeah. is that they're willing to bring on people, but they already can see the people. Because if you can't see them, you can't bring them in. No. You know, your eyes has to, and ears have to be open to it. Yeah, and the gods respond to your gift to other people in droves. They, re- they reward you. Yeah, totally, brother. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> it's it's not serendipity. It's like something you've already put in action. That's why it's happening. Mm. You know, it's not just an accident. You know, a happy accident. It happens because you've actually started the motion. You threw the pebble, you caused the ripples, mm-hmm. and the waves are coming at you. <laughs> Yo, this is a sick podcast. Okay, uh, tell me one of the most craziest in sync mo- that very much like that, where you're just like, I can't believe this has happened to me to this extent because of those. There reports. are so many. Give me, but some. I'll pick a couple. Yeah, go on. All right, uh, we're playing Southport Weekender, and Giles Peterson is DJing, and he's just signed us to his label. We finished the album. But then we decide at the end of the concert to do a, our own version of Always There. Nice. He walks into the room coming coming back from his end of his DJ set and he goes, oh, my God, you've got to put that in. The crowd are screaming for it for us to play it again. We play it twice in a row. He says, you've got to go in the studio and cut Always There. I said, fine, that's been part of my history. It was yeah. we, I played it with Light of the World from the jump. before and yeah. from the jump. You know, and when, when one of the first albums that my cousin brought home after we left school, yeah. you know, it was Precious Sensitive, Ronnie Laws. And so I know the Side Effects version, I know that version. And uh, we go into the studio, but our singer is not well. She can't sing. She'd lost her voice totally. So Giles said, get in someone else. Get, 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 in, get in a big name. I said, <laughs> well, you know, it's like, and my my head is thinking... When we say big name to me, female singers, I'm thinking Shaka Khan, I'm thinking, yeah. you know, uh, Aretha Franklin, I'm yeah. thinking Jocelyn Brown, you know, but they, yeah. all, these, all these people are out of my reach, yeah, totally. you know. And, and he said, and within that sentence, within that's going around my head and that name is already in my spinning around my head, you know. He says, Look, why don't we get Jocelyn Brown? I said, are you crazy? How do we get Jocelyn Brown? You know, somebody else's guy is is, mm. is in America. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> she said no, she's over here. Stop I it can off. get her. Next day, she's in the studio. We chat. We chat about music. We chat about eating chocolate cake and fried chicken. <laughs> and she goes in one take. Bang, goes pops her head through the door and says, "Do you want me to throw some BVs?" Goes in another one take. We were in there for about fifteen minutes recording this tune, and oh. she was, and it was like a platform that went on to propel us to bigger things. What a gift. Yeah. Can I just do some BVs? Your head must have just been going right off at that point. It's like, yeah, go go for it. You know, <laughs> you're you know, you know when they say your hair stand on end? You yeah, know? my hair stand on the end. You know, it's like yeah. that. You know, doing Don't You Worry About a Thing. You know, I'm thinking Mason knows Stevie Wonder because when I inter- interviewed her on the phone, to get the job as incognito singer, I said, dude, can, you know, I didn't know, I did not know what she was doing. You know, it's a friend mm. just gave me a number. And I said, do you know any Stevie Wonder songs? And she said, and she, she giggled. She went, <laughs> I said, what, what's up? She says, I'm actually recording with Stevie Wonder, you know, oh, within, my... you know, and, and, she, and she was doing, uh, one, she was doing some recording with Stevie and she came to London and I had already recorded this track before this conversation. So the key was perfect for her and everything. She came in saying, don't you worry about a thing. And I thought, oh my, man, one day I hope to meet Stevie. I know you're connected with him. So one day, you know, maybe we'll meet him. go to Los Angeles. No one tells me anything. We're on stage. And uh, I'm about to play my little guitar lick at the front of Don't You Worry About a Thing. And I'm expecting Mesa's voice to kick in. My eyes are closed. And suddenly Stevie's voice comes on. And he's walked on to the front of the stage and he goes past me. And I'm like, you know. And then we spend the rest of the, the night with Stevie at his studio. S- serendipitous, yes. But like I said, we did cast that stone. Yeah. You know. That. And it's happened. it happens over and over and over again. It's, you know, everyone that I've wished for have not only just come into my life, 
you know, the amount of sitting down listening to George Benson I did, and then mm. suddenly our album is released on a label that yeah. had his original producer of those great albums that I listened to, Breezing, you know, In Flight, you know, Tommy LaPuma wants me to produce George Benson. You know, I'm sitting in a car and we're going to George Benson's house. How do you feel about that? You know, I don't I don't know whether I can say these things on on my brother. Yeah, say what but, you want. but I, you know, I wish I'd worn brown trousers. Yeah, you know, <laughs> uh, all the way to George's house. I was thinking, oh my god, you know, and what then, have I done? And what have I got, got myself into yeah, here? You know, but do you ever think that? Do you ever think to yourself, what have I got myself into here? Like you're you're in these scenarios, and it's actually yeah. out of your hands. Yeah. Do you ever think to yourself, well, why why me? What, what what the hell's going on here? I feel that, but I also must say, without sounding big-headed, and you know, because I'm that. No, that, yeah, that's the last thing you, you are. Know, yeah. I, I don't want to to come over that way, and I don't. I, I don't like people who come over that way. You don't. So I sh- I shy away from from going in that direction or letting the ego kick in so much that I that I can even entertain that that kind of be- behavior. Mm, mm. But having said that. I felt it was coming to me because I was, I was. What's, what's, what, what's, 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 what's the word? You know, when somebody wants a house and they kind of like wish for it, and uh, oh, you were, um, you were uh, prophesizing almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a word for that, but you know, um, you know that that a lot of people use it into visualizing. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and that's that's what happened. Uh, you know, my life has been visualizing my future. You know, from 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 the from my earliest memory on planet Earth, yeah. because I saw what happens to, when music gets into people's life. That was my earliest memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was on a beach with my grandmother, and that's my earliest memory. And people had come from the sugarcane fields, and they come there and they sit underneath trees because they, you know it's hot. Yeah. It's hard work cutting sugarcane, carrying it on your back, and Ain't stuff. Ain't my back, baby. That's a lot, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. And, and it would. They didn't have machinery in those days. It was yeah. people just doing it by hand. And they would be underneath the the tree, the filao trees, and uh, they would, you know, the men would be hitting a little rum, and you know, the ladies would be kind of having their their a little bit of oil put on their shoulders, and then. A musician would appear with a hand drum, a ravan, mm. you know, and it's, and I'd be suddenly hypnotized by this rhythm, yeah. and then I'd watch, and I'd see what would be my future vision, become a healer, ma- magician, you know, these are what these are, you know. I didn't know the term musician. I knew the word magic before that, and I knew this was magic happening, you know. These were magicians and healers. Because what happened was the next person would take a little bottle with a fork and and this thing would be happening and they'd start singing, you know, this music that had come from the slaves that had been taken to Mauritius, you know, this African sound and was just entering my heart and I, and, and I could visualise that this would be me one day. You know, and then the magic would happen. The people would be straightened up, standing, lifting up their skirts, dancing. What happened to these broken bodies? They're like, this is raising the dead. This is Lazarus mm. business. Yes, yes. You know, and so, you know, th- that showed me the power that we will have to carry for the rest of our lives once we embrace music and that direction. But it's know? interesting, you made the connection from a medicinal uh, magical place, which um, over the course of time, and I don't think it's any fault of anybody's particular. It's just it becomes music becomes such the status quo of or the default. It's it's a soundtrack to our busy busy schedules. But when you're like yourself, I won't allow myself to see music that way because can't. I can't. No, I can't because it's the stuff that saved me. Yeah, you know. It's the the words "Don't you worry about a thing" yeah. wasn't just a song that was in the charts and kind of like I liked it because it sounded nice. No. Yes, it did sound nice, but it entered my heart in a different way. Mm. You know, I heard a man chopping 
in the forest chopping stuff on the trees again you know and I thought to myself I'm not going to hear you know I'm I'm in the middle of a rainforest somewhere you know South America I'm 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 not going to hear don't you worry about a thing here you know that that doesn't even enter my head you know mm-hmm. then you hear a man in that tree singing don't you worry about a thing and you think it's reached here wow. there's a reason why it's reached here because you know it's things like a song like one love by by uh, Bob Marley there's a reason why this would have traveled and and get into so because it gives people you know if you needed an ex an, an, an example of something coming into people's life and 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 becoming their mantra mm. you know their healing their their their, their path mm. to the ne- to 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 something that's happening next because there's obstacles in their way these are the songs mm-hmm. you know you know at a time when what's going on in the world right now with all yeah. these wars and fighting yeah. something like one love is like the, uh, I have to embrace it yeah. and, and I have to play it to people and I have to send it to people. And I say, yeah. wake up, listen to it again. This is what we need, you know. We need, because we need peace and, and, and we have to be an advocate for it. We have to shout, you know. We have to be heard because mm. we represent the majority, mm. you know. Because mm. when you stand in front of your audience and you see them all packed in there and you're doing your thing, you know that you're part of the majority, Yeah, you know. So the the essence of what what you give, and the healing you give, and the bringing together of people, and the uniting mm. beyond color, beyond creed, one nation under the groove, mm. bang, you know. Mm. So that's what you do, and that's what I do. Yeah, you know? that's our world, and and that that is clearly us understanding that we've got to entertain, but we've got to serve. Yeah, hundred percent. How much? I mean, <laughs> I was going somewhere else, but I'm going to stick with this. We as artists, we have a uh, an extended shelf life of time, which we can take stock, reflect, look at things in different ways. Maybe mm-hmm. compared to the the regular dude on the street, because he or she got busy lives, got busy things to do, and these influences of wars, propaganda, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, wh- however you look at it, um, what music has managed to do is dial in. Take Rage Against the Machine. Killing in the name of, you know, like this, this song still bangs, bangs and has the same relevance as it did from the 90s. Yes. Just a different, same topic, different conversation almost, doesn't it? Exactly, exactly. Couldn't put it a bit better. Well, how do we dial into that as artists? How do, how do, we, how do we forecast? That's incredibly innate for, 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 for that to happen like that. But if you find... if. If this language is your if you, inspiration, information, you know, then it's easy because mm. because you seek it. You seek it in, you know, when you watch the news. You seek it when when you're told the, some news. Mm. You seek it in what you read, in what you listen, in exchanges with friends. Because, you know, it's like there's. There's a, a a line that we follow subconsciously and consciously because of what we've what we want to enter our hearts. We know what we don't want to mm. entering our hearts. We know what we don't want our minds cl- clouded with, mm-hmm. you know. And mm. because we're a, we have that filter, and yet it's not a, just a filter to 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 just channel us into. You know, we've got to have pop success. We've mm. got to kind of become famous. We've got to kind of you know. We live in a in a time when you know you turn on. Twenty different channels of people trying to be famous and yeah, be uh, yeah. and be famous and With glamorous. Different problems you know, and everything. And, yeah. and, and, you know, it's like that's okay because there's some people being fed that and they're happy. You know, it's like if it makes you happy, fine. But I know that it's not enough for me. No, you know that ain't for me because I need to. I need something more. But, but don't don't you? I, I, I know the answer by the way. <laughs> I'm sure I do. Um, but don't you feel like? With all these <laughs> twenty channels, with God knows how many viewers, with all these twenty different problems, and you, do you feel like you've got a kind of uh, own a level of responsibility as an artist to almost uh, make as many songs as possible that identify with so many problems? It's Not a just lot, as right? an artist, but as a man, as a father, yeah, yeah, you know, as a human being, yeah. you know, the problem is when you watch somebody else talking about their trivial little 
problems and, mm. and, and you know in 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 relationships that they've been thrust to have mm. because they're, they're not even natural things you know mm. they've been stuck on a program together to to have a relationship and to and yeah. to show and to show the frailties and and uh, you know it's like it's almost like we we're not even educating our our kids anymore no. you know and i'm i and i'm not afraid to say it mm. and i feel myself better for it and i feel above it yeah yeah, yeah you know yeah, yeah, yeah. and and that's okay that's okay with me because yeah. if, if we can bring you know to become to to show empathy to what's going on you know and and you you have to dig deep because there's enough in a way of to stop you there's mm. enough you know if you Reasons want you, to, you, to to raise consciousness yeah. of to, uh, of others and yourself yeah you know there's stuff that's blocking you in throughout the day enough stuff's going to be thrown at you mm. so what you know are you going to deflect these grenades you know oh, it's, it's so deep and you're so right i think about it all the time it's like it's a uh, brits us um what's the word british the british public uh so self-loathing yeah. Um, and the TV doesn't help and the world is changing. And I think a lot of our creative minds are calcified for this like, right single yeah. vision of, like you say, fame, popularity yeah. and, and 15 seconds yeah. of fame. It's, um, it's really hard to see past that. But what the beauty about, that's what I love about living in London, is there's a scene going on all, all the time. All the time. Yeah. All the time. Kicking it against it, <laughs> opening up your mind. Pick up Ronnie Scott's, by the way, because I know you've got, some, you've got a hell of a lot of uh, gigs coming up there. Yeah, but, but institution. But, but institutions, you know, but like there's the Jazz Cafe, there's Ronnie Scott's, yeah. there's, there's various little things happening for artists in Camden. You know, you walk around and it's easy to kind of see it as like a tourist trap. But I see beyond that. Me too. I know that there's creativity going on on the walls. There's creativity going on inside inside the buildings. There's somebody standing on the bridge and kind of singing their heart out. Yeah. Not because they, this they, this is the easy way to make money. This is the hardest way to make money, you know, but kind of like doing it because they, they want to be heard. You see you know? the bands playing yeah, now on yeah. the street as amazing, well. Amazing, amazing. And the scene right now, the, the music scene, mm. it's beautiful. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's beautiful. I mean, there's some... And, and people are saying to me, what do you think of the future with, with AI? AI is going to happen anyway, yeah, yeah, all right? Yeah. This is always going to be the, the path that we, we try to kind of uh we're so we become so sophisticated that we can make we can we, we can the robot's going to get closer to us yeah, yeah, yeah all right but having said that the robot is always going to be the robot it won't do what i do so it's not going to affect my life yeah real talk see what i'm saying it's true people can get fixated on that it's totally they 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 ask me the question I, if I had a penny for every time that somebody asked me, "What do you think of AI?" and it's like I have, I would, I'd be a very rich man. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, look, it's exists. It's been existing for a while and for quite a while. Now it's getting to a new level where suddenly you are noticing it. But I've always known it's there, and I've always known it's been at, at work because I've opened up my mind to the fact that it's there, yeah. and how I can how, how how I can conduct myself and behave myself, yeah. and kind of and also how how I can shine. And put some uh, what what has worked for me into others, yeah. so that they have a kind of mentality of being able to deal with things like AI when it comes. Yeah. You know, if you want to be in competition with it, and if you want to kind of surrender to it, fine. If you want to use it to your advantage, but also enhance you what you, who you are. You know, be your own AI. Like, oh, you know, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. It's like. It's do you super... think? It's, do you think people challenge you for the the AI thing because they feel that your your ensemble is conventional from the from a, from a you know yeah, from music? Yeah, they think side. I'm an old bloke. Well, they're trying. You know? They're trying but to challenge you with the idea exactly, of future full stuff. Exactly, that's but ridiculous, the, isn't it? You know, this old man is yeah. uh, is rolling home. You well, know? the band it's isn't. Like... The band is like progressive, and that's the that's the genre that you guys stepped into from the jump so it never feels like out i mean you know there's fucking the, the floors are full people are going to the gigs it's you know this is everything that yeah. mu <laughs> it's it's forward thinking yeah. music yes and uh and also it knows not to kind of just lose yourself into the mathematics of anything mm. you know it, it, it's still soul music mm. you know Soul music ain't because you've kind of like grown up in Detroit and kind of and and been on the streets and 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 your music has come from that. That's that's an that's one expression of soul, mm. you know. But soul is like the thing that makes you 
empower you, give you the engine mm. to make new music, then and to reach out to people and give give let your songs be their wings. Yeah, gems on this podcast, man. Honestly, my face ain't stopped smiling since you sat down. Man. <laughs> you know what I get a, an absolute adult kick out of recently. I could I fall into the SOS band trap. <laughs> Yo, know, I just I'm swimming and I've got no air and I'm just loving everything. SOS band. Yeah. Let's, can we just can we talk about this era of soul yeah. for a second? You know, Rene and Angela and mm. uh, you know, these conjure up for me as a as a young boy watching things like Boys in Hood and Menace of Society and they 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 were they were hints of these bands in the soundtrack. Yes, all the time because you know that's that's where that music comes from, you know. The beauty about that is that people weren't afraid to be sensual mm. without having to go straight to the more hardcore and more hard hitting to kind of get a message over. Man. It was it was okay. And it was it, it was also a time when people weren't afraid. Again, the AI thing. People like when they first came out and people started using these little drum machines, you know, until mm. until somebody would actually make it, you know, with a hit. Then every every industry that's trying to make money from it will suddenly grab hold of it. But a lot of that music had a little bubbling TR eight oh eight or or uh, you know a, 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 a little Tim flex Pitt, something fle anything yeah fl flex of electronics yeah. w within it, you know. And yet it retained that soul music that you would hear on an early Motown record, you know, or uh, a classic soul song. Mm. You know, it was like. Just times change, and that mm. and that that was such a strong uh, soundtrack to people's lives, like yeah. yourself, Zap and Roger, you know, things like that. yeah, and and that it stayed and it lasted the test of time because it, you know, somebody in, in embracing Zap and Roger and putting it into a, a hardcore rap tune later on, yeah. you know, would kind of have success with it, but not only because you know. It was connected with the past. It was like opening up the eyes of people that hadn't, hadn't even heard the past. That's right, yeah. It was taking them into the future. George Clinton and all these people suddenly got this, this you know, they, they got sent a stage for what was being sampled and, you know, soul, funk, yeah. jazz. We all got... What's right is right. Yeah. <laughs> you know the one for me, George Clinton, is... Um, Fries with that shake. <laughs> I still get a kick out of playing it. It's, just, <laughs> it's so silly. It, it, <laughs> telling it like it is, that's what he did, you know, yeah. and uh, and not being afraid of it either. I'm yeah. going to send you a picture later on of Clinton at a festival. I don't know if you've ever seen it, where he walks out into the crowd and there's a little child following him. Have, have you ever no, seen that picture? No. I'm going to send it to you Please. later, okay? And he's... He's, I think he's got on just like a nappy or something, you know. It's like he's definitely half naked. Genius. And uh, and he's walking out into a crowd at a festival, and there's probably a member of his family because it was always about fifty or sixty of them. Have you? Have you ever? Did you ever see Funkadelic? The, I've seen many videos. Of yeah, them. <laughs> but it was like an eye opener because you thought they've let in the whole. There were more people on stage than there were in the audience. Yeah. You know, it's like you they, you thought they'd just open up the doors and let the world in. Can you imagine tour managing that? That was an absolute <laughs> nightmare, right? All high off some the guest, easy whiz. The yeah. guest list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know I mean, never mind about the front of house. You know, just go backstage. That's where the real audience is, <laughs> That's right? That's right. Wow, yeah. I mean, golden eras. Undescribable now when you think about the lengths that people would gather to put on shows and um, and again it's just it echoes a lot of what incognito are about doesn't it yeah i mean i'm 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 putting on on stage every night certain thing elements because i need to be fed mm. the the sound that a horn section made to for me when i first heard tower of power the music of chicago Mm. You know, those all those albums that came out by Chicago, the, one of my favourite horn sections. You know, then Earth, Wind and Fire and yeah. bands like that and and, and, and Cool in the Gang, you know, mm -hmm. 1975 at the Rainbow, you know, it's like the horn section was just, oh, Cully's Bayan, killer. You know, you'd hear these sounds and I have that in my band. 
I have that connection with the horn sounds because I understand what it does to my body. People say, what do you have always carrying a big horn section? You know, it's like, must be costly. You got to understand that it ain't about cost. It ain't about money. It's about feeding my soul with the things that I love. How do you, you know? translate that to a promoter, though? How do you translate, you know, that, that whole ensemble? I, we, under, I guess it depends on you the create, values. Yeah, you, you do. You create, the, you create the, the, the opening. Yeah, you're right. You know? I remember my record record company when I signed for the Acid Jazz years with, with Giles. I remember Universal not wanting to ha- to take us to Japan because it was going to be too costly. And my management, my management saying, um, well, we can't really afford to go. Then I said, well, take some of my, my money mm. from my publishing mm. and put it towards there. So the money that should have been going towards my rent and food Take it there. went in there and let's let me go to Japan because I've got to go to Japan. You know, I'm, I've yeah. already I've I've studied this in my mind. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I know what's going to happen. It's become when your, I go one to of your Japan. biggest. Been, you it's, know. It's, it's, it, I could live off yeah. Japan and that's blue it. note for like for like two months or something, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? You know, that's, that's right. just you, just like <laughs> knock out, close off Tokyo. We're coming in. You know? Yeah, and and you've got to be able to. It's it was never a gamble for me. Yeah. It was always. This is the way you win. Yeah, you know, it wasn't a gamble. This was like a certainty. Mm. You know, I'm putting my 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 effort, my energy, my finance, and my imagination and my ideas and the stuff that would, you know, it's like I knew that not only would I get a financial reward, but I knew that once I get into the culture, I was going to fall in love with it. Mm. I was already falling in love with it. But then certain things happen while you're there that that continues to feed you because, you know, even driving on a motorway, seeing like a big poster and I'm like, whoa, check this out. I love what you do for me, Toyota. I Mm. think I love what you do for me. That's in my next tune I'm going to write, you know. And it was like, and I wrote, I love what you do for me. Just in another country, you happen to see it on the motorway. Yeah, that's right. An English language in Japan. Yeah. And it suddenly struck my heart and became like a huge tune for me, you know. And then Toyota giving me taking one of my tunes and putting it in the advert and putting a top uh, J- Japanese s- uh, superstar, uh, you know, in the video. You know, it's like doors opening doors. See what I'm saying? You can't write that. It's just when in, as David Ross, my friend David Ross would say, when in doubt, there is no doubt. Yeah, I love it. Do you know what I mean? Because it's true. If you're true. in the right place and you're investing with love, you know that this is right. It's the right thing to do. There's no doubt. Yeah. Yeah, nurture a child, and you've got somebody who's educated and 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 who's who's likely to become a champion. Mm. You know, take away their education, and 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 stop the shininess that that is open through music, through art, through creativity, and through attention to detail. Mm. You know, and you know, kids don't pay attention to detail because you you've take you've taken away that element. Uh, that ability for them to do so. Mm. You, you told them, you're showing them shortcuts. You're telling them they can get on something that they don't even understand before they understand it. Mm. Here's a mobile phone, go play with that, you know? Well, they also think it's... Teach trip. them what a, what a phone was in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is the thing. Teach them what it was in the beginning because if you're teaching people... Like, I think, and I can relate with you in your, your timeline as a child, as a, as a child um, being creative, with the beatboxing, I started really, really young. So by the time I got to eighteen, nineteen, I was already established, but I was an un- unknown. And it's same with you with the music, with yeah. the music instrumentation yeah. and and the music, the songwriting. So when, when people, when kids, young people, and or others see that, yeah. there's almost this default of like, well, I want that too. How yeah. did he get it? How come? How come he's doing that? And it's got to be easy. Show me, isn't the, it? The good thing is the good thing about my generation and your generation and against. Mm-hmm the current generation, is they have YouTube. Yes. They can be inspired by people who can show them how and, and learn quickly. And yeah. they, they will not only learn one instrument, They'll they will learn all. four or five. That's all the, all the little geniuses that's coming out have, have, have got it. But you can also have the same opening to a child that only lets them go and play a game where it's a shoot-up shoot game mm. or they're not, they're not watching, you know... The, we have to kind of open that to them. We have to have 
things that we're excited about. And mm. even if we're not educated to that, we have to say, I'm going to, I wasn't, but I'm going to open up my mind for the sake of my child. Yeah, that's you right. Know? And that's where the, 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 f- the future is lucky if somebody as is willing to, to kind of see that it's not just about shortcuts and it's not just about shutting them up, mm. you know? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Hold that, I've got... Hold that, yeah. I'm, I'm chatting to somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The amount of times I get on a bus I and know. I just and I get frustrated on a mm. journey because kids going, Mum, Dad, what about, you know, pointing out to something and they're going yap, yap, yap with yeah. their friend or whatever yeah. or somebody or else or and ignore yeah. the child, yeah. you know? You and I are lucky because somebody could see the potential in us mm. because they they actually gravitated towards our questioning. Yes. And they answered us. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Where now? The art of conversation, mm. I hope, is not dead. Because not, not on this platform, it ain't, baby. This. <laughs> <laughs> I learned so much through conversation. This conversation alone is, you know, it's absolute gold. Um, and... Uh, if I, if I wasn't lucky enough, I get to edit it and listen to it again in <laughs> retrospect. Um, brother, tell me about the new album. Tell me about what's going on here. Again, you know, you don't make nineteen albums um, and uh, and just do it because you've or you're you're repeating yourself. Mm. You know, like I said, when you find your sound, you've got to repeat your sound. That's a but, tough one. But not the songs and not the compositions. Mm. You know. You've got to retain your identity. Your identity is based inside your sound, That's but your identity I, can 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 be can be broadened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you've learned new things. You're not the same guy you were last year. So you how know, do you unless, retain that? How do you keep hold of that? Because sound? you keep you you keep traveling. You keep reading. You keep having conversations. When somebody new comes in the band, you listen to them. You know, you know. This is Quincy Jones. He comes. You come into the room. You know, if he didn't hear Michael. He would you wouldn't have got Michael. Michael. He heard him. He was willing to kind of listen to the fact that he would go into a room and, and start tapping and, 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 and making little noises. Mm. I'm going to use that noise, mm. you know. But you, if you didn't encourage him, he may not have used that, that sound. That's the art of retaining your own sound. You're your own AI. You're borrowing from life. You're sampling every day and you're retaining. You know that more than most mm. because that's how you come up with your sounds. Yeah. Because you're sampling, Yeah. you know, without a machine by your side. You know, yeah. AI is, can, can do it. People can use machines. Go ahead, use yeah. it. You know, make your voice sound like it's... Then go on stage and perform it without the electronics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I'd be impressed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. And that's the biggest shortfall of... Of performing live at the yeah, moment. but then there are one or two artists that, that can actually, actually do, do it. it. They yeah, can yeah, actually yeah. do it. Yeah. You know, yeah, totally. It's the same technique that you've learned. Mm. You know, yeah. If you know this machine makes that sound, I'm going to make that sound, but I'm not a machine. It's genius. I mean, that in yeah. itself is a conjuring thought of like, whoa, what? See, he's magician. See, so now I'm thinking to myself, wow. So, if you were to create a whole album based off of an electronic, then reinterpret it in acoustic, then that is, would be beatbox, wouldn't it? It is, totally. <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> hey, you're too much for me today. Still early. Um, I, admire, I admire bands like Duran Duran, who just have this sound, and it never seems to leave them. No, because the identity can also come from your tone, yeah. you know? The voice of Simon Le Bon is the voice is an identity identity you know it's a it's 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 a it's a print you know it's a fingerprint it's 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 lodged into this one person and it's not in any other human being mm. you know so you put that 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 voice together with a, a little group that's making a certain sound a keyboard player that's guiding him towards a more electronic kind of uh horizon mm. You know, and opening up his horizon, a guitarist that's kind of got real rock riffs. Yeah, real rock. You know, yeah. a drummer that's not as experienced as other other drummers, but he's solid, wants to create that sound. You you you're creating your identity yeah, yeah. through all the way through. through through your abilities and your lack of abilities thereof. Yeah. You know, your limitations are part of your sounds. 
you know, then you grow that and you don't lose that mm. thing that's made you because that's that's been created from how much you know and how much you don't know, you know. Well, my albums serve me well because not only because of what I know, also because of what I don't know. Yeah. That's the space in my music. Do you find listening back to your records, um, do you uh, are you challenged or do you over critique your music for you know particularly the early um, albums because of your lack of what you don't know? I don't listen to my music unless I have to play it live. Yeah, yeah I kind of I understand yeah. that. That makes no, sense. No, because there's so much there's too much to listen to, yeah. and I love listening. Yeah. You know, I'm a radio DJ, you know, on, yeah, yeah. on, on Apple Music. You right. know, it's like Groove Velocity Radio. There's hundreds of shows on there, you know, and that's because I listen to music. I'm not on there playing it because I've been told to play. They they, they hired me as a DJ because of my love of what I listen to. And the history. And not just the history, but also who's got a record out this week, you know. Yo, that's a lot of that's a lot of uh, information to take in every week for you, Bluey. But that's easy because the moment you hear something, you know what you want and what you want to reject mm. and what you want to accept. You know, it's like it's like food. Mm. You're not gonna keep on eating something you don't like. <laughs> you know, you'll take a taste and go, "That's not for me." Yeah. You know, music is like that. Yeah. Uh, the the path is like that. Mm. You know, I'm not gonna take that path because I don't like that road. I, I that, that 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 that's that's not for me. This is for me, you know. This is the walk down the beach. I'll take that. Thank you very mm. much. You know, I don't want this stony ground. I want this nice surface of beach there. Thank you very much. But that's mm. that's choices we make, yeah. you know, and the direction we push ourselves into. Music echoes all of that and in volumes. Yeah. Before we go, tell me... Who we should be looking out for then um, on the periphery of, uh, of new music and soul and acid jazz and, you know, the, the walks that you, uh, you travel well, I always like to promote the, the people that I'm working with from, from you know. Nice. Um, listen, listen to the band called Yakul. Yakul. Nice. Y, y, Y-A-K-U-L. You know, I've been, I've been pushing them for, for, for a while. I heard a, a band, uh, two guys, Drew Wine and, and Basil Petit from Belgium, I heard the, a track that they did called uh, uh, Grand Soiree. Uh, Gros Soiree, sorry. Gros Soiree. Soiree. Yeah. I played it on my radio show. Then when I was playing on the radio show, I started singing to it. So I asked them, I said, look, come in the studio. We relay that track down and we'll put a new section and I'll put vocals and my team on it and, my, and a horn section and, a, and some killer, killer solos from my band. And it's like, it's one of the top best, most you know, exciting tracks on, on, on this record. That's incredible. You know? And it's because you, you see people, you know, uh, uh, there, there, are, there are, t- there is a, a two new, fairly new singers on, on, uh, on the album, mm. Cherry V, Cherry with an I, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and, uh, Natalie Duncan. And, uh, Natalie's contribution has just been, and, and Cherry's contribution, but Cherry's done one rec one, one album with us before, uh, featured on one track. But now, this sound, this new sound I've got because I've embraced these two girls. Mm. And I even said that, you know, a lot of the ex-singers or that have been on several albums, are you, are, you know, are we getting a shot on this album? I said, you know, to be able to move forward, I have to give space to those that have to play and sing with us every night. You know, mm. you've got your own band going on, you've got your own career, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, taking yeah. time out because of, of where you are in your mm. life. I need to give them the props. I need to raise them. I need to give them the platform. I need to give them the the hand, the, yeah. you know, the, the help that they need to to kind of be where they, where they need to be, you know. And wow. and and that that only not only helps them in their solo careers, but it comes back as like this last gig we did in in Switzerland on last week, the first gig that I've ever played new material to before the album is out. It just opened my eyes to like you're doing the right thing, Bluey. You know, it's mm. like it's confirmation. You know, oh. beautiful, my brother. Well, Godspeed to more. Get these tools out, huh? Yeah, and uh, just a little t- tip to anybody who haven't checked out. You probably have. You know, if you gravitate towards the kind of music, Salt S A U L T S A U L. Oh, okay. They release records on 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 a regular. And you'll you you realize what I mean by a regular, <laughs> and all the the featured artists with with them, you know, some incredible singers, some some incredible musicians. Salt S A U L T. Fantastic. So yeah, you got enough going on for you to Google. All right, there's no excuses. This is 
Bluey's doing it, you're doing it. You know what I mean? Let's go discover the new album, Into You. My brother, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. What a blessing. Absolute genius. Real Love genius you, in the house. Real, real, let's do that real. tune. Yeah, let's do that tune. 100%. Yeah. It's a banger. You're going to love it. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Killer Killer Podcast out like it was out of fashion, all right? Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. You remember? Crime don't pay, but neither do they. You stay lucky, <laughs> people. Peace. <laughs>